Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to my shop. Uh, that time that I need to do some preventive maintenance or some routine maintenance, if you will, on our 10,000 watt Onan generator in our 2003 Monaco Dynasty. It has just over 3,000 miles now, so I'm going to adjust the valves, or check, sorry, check the valves for the third time um, in, the, in the 17 years we've owned it. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and change the V-belt for the cooling system, for the, for the uh, fan, the blower fan, and the water pump. It's one belt. It's a Spec A engine. And I'm going to change the fuel filter. So the first, I don't know, eight, seven, eight years, I guess, we used the coach, or we bought the coach and used it. It, it was heavily used for motorsports, being racing, duning, sledding. Uh, so we run the generator a lot. There was most of those years we put probably right around 200, give or take, 200 hours a year on. So I was servicing the engine every 100 hours, so a couple times a year. The last about nine years, we've only put about 105, 107 hours, something like that on it. In the last nine years, um, we use it for a few hours here and there as we're traveling, just for to run the roof airs when it's real warm. Other than that, we really don't use the generator much. Um, but Seeing as how it's been about nine years, I wanted to check the, uh, I wanted to replace the V-belt and the fuel filter. The oil changes get done every couple of years when I do the chassis, which is kind of wasteful, I guess, because I only have about 12 to 15 hours every other, well, probably every couple of years, maybe 20, 25 hours, every couple of, couple of years, 20 hours or so. So it's kind of senseless, but I do it just because it's not that doesn't take that big. It's not that big a deal, and I just do it when I do the engine. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pull the pull you, or the uh, all the covers off, change the V belt. I don't think it's only got about 100 and like I said, 105, 107 hours on it. Same with the fuel filter, but I'm going to change them anyway just because of the time. Uh, last time I did the valves was at 2,000 hours, and they were off about a thou. They were a little tight, so I. I readjusted them. The first time I did it was about 12, maybe a little over 1,200 hours because we bought the coach with, with right around 1,200 hours on the generator and I seriously doubted the original owners. Um, they only owned it for five years, for, well, not quite five years. Um, so I doubt they did the valves or had the valves done. Maybe they did, I don't know, but I checked them at 1,200 hours and they were spot on, 8,000 on intake and exhaust. Um, I just, again, I checked them, or I did them again at eight or 2,000, so r roughly about 800 hours, which is when the book calls for it, and they were off about a thou. I couldn't quite get an 8,000 speeder gauge under it. So I went ahead and adjusted them, and uh, we'll go in and check them here. I, I, I don't know, I doubt, I doubt they'll be off much, because these, from my experience with these things, whether it be the Kubota, Perkins, the Suzu, um, those are the ones I'm familiar with on the on the Onans. We've had Onan generators for 25 years now, and I worked on the 7500s and uh, watt ones in the older Beavers and a couple Wander Lodges. So, and they, they were running the Perkins and the Kubota at the time. So I don't think there's going to be really too much to do, but I want to go ahead and check it anyway. So um, let's get the covers off of this thing and get to work. With the top cover off and the back cover off, this is kind of this is what you should be looking at here. Now you don't need to remove the uh, side opposite the control panel. It joins on the back corner opposite the control, and you do not need to disconnect your fuel lines or your cables or anything like that that come in at the base. There are um, I don't know how many probably a dozen or so six millimeter um, to take a 10 millimeter socket fasteners along the back there are, there are a flange bolt you go take along the back and then you can pull out the cover that is the back and it angles forward probably about 16 and 14 inches to the opening that you can take it out the back but I found that once you undo it you can just lay it up it basically just pivot up right here, move it forward, and lift it out of the way. Easy peasy. The uh, air silencer, air intake silencer, and everything here can just be undone and moved out of the way, and that'll gain you pretty decent access to the alternator. Now, I believe I mentioned earlier 
that the uh, that ours has the Suzu engine in it. Somewhere in there, early 2000s, they switched over to the Kubota. Um, this is a Spec A engine and has the aluminum shroud. Or excuse me, excuse me, not the shroud, the plastic shroud, but the aluminum squirrel cage and the single belt. That was uh, kind of a, you, those that were, a, I believe, a Spec B, you could buy the kit to convert them over. Uh, they had two belts, or if you were fortunate enough to get it to come with the single belt, if it's Spec A, then great. This one was actually, according to the serial number, this was a Spec A. So uh, from this point, I'm going to go ahead and crawl up underneath, and I'm going to pull the uh, fan hub off, loosen the alternator so that I can change the belt out, then finish back there, then I'll move up, replace the fuel filter that's right down here, directly beneath the oil filter, and at that point we'll move up top and finish it off with uh, the top end, the over, the, run the overhead on it. So once you have the six, uh, six millimeter nuts off of the shroud here, and they are a 10 millimeter socket. Sorry, I generally try to refer to I generally try to refer to this actually been rubbing a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It's rubbed a little bit there. I generally try to refer to bolt sizes by the actual size. I don't know if that's the industrial maintenance in me versus automotive or versus the uh, automotive industry but um, bear with me Actually, this belt, I probably don't need to change it. It only has about 100 hours on it, but it's got about 10, oh, maybe not quite 10 years on it. So uh, I'm going to go up top side now and loosen the alternator. So with the alternator, is a 12 millimeter socket. Once I got that out of the uh, loosened, then you go ahead, I just collapse the alternator the belt off of it and then, off, and then I get it off the crankshaft I just can't get it around all right sorry I thought I hit record on that but I just noticed the uh, little red light wasn't flashing when I come around the side so after undoing three of the four nuts that hold this outer shroud on I was able to get the new belt snake down around the crank hope this is all showing up I'm outside here and then up over the center the hub for the water pump around the alternator belt at this point I can go ahead and tighten on that I think it's like 280 to 350 thousandths of an inch so figure 
quarter to five sixteenths is a good number to shoot for. Now see as how this was rubbing a little bit, I actually took some, I believe these measured about 60 thousandths, 55 to 60 thousandths washers, and I put them up over those studs, and that will space this shroud off the, uh, you know what, I'm wondering if I should Wait to put this on until I run the overhead. Just because I can turn the engine over. Hopefully this is showing up. It's kind of a tight fit down in here, but I got the fuel filter fittings loosened. They're almost finger tight. Then I just broke the mounting stud loose. I wanted to keep it tight until I had the um, fittings loose. I had it loose for finger tight, but nope. Turned about a half a revolution, or and psyched me out. There we go. Okay. 
Let's push that off the bracket. I've stuffed some absorbent pads down in there. So there's the old filter. Like I said, this doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of time on it. I mean, time it does, but not a lot of hours. I think I'm just over 100, about 105, 106 hours. But it's been almost 10 years, nine, nine years since I did this major service on it. Other than oil, other than oil, I'm going to preface by saying the oil gets, has gotten changed three times, three or four times. All right, so fuel filters installed. I'll go ahead and pull my absorbent pad out and clean this mess up a little bit down there. Turkey in for a little closer view here. So there's your oil filter. This is the access door. And there's the fuel filter right below it. So again, I went ahead and undid the fittings before I broke the center stud, mounting stud loose. Then, or actually I broke it loose, just snugged it. Then broke the two fittings loose till they were finger tight. Took this nut off, threaded those off, pushed it off, replaced it real quick, all with an absorbent pad underneath. And then I just got in and just kind of wiped it up. But tight, tight space in there, but it can be done right here through the oil filter. Now, if you were thinking ahead, like I should have been doing, I should have done this last fall when I serviced it and the oil filter would have been out of the way. You'd have had all kinds of room without the oil filter right there. So a little uh, suggestion for timing. If you're gonna do this, do it at the same time as an oil change. All right, so all the fasteners are out and the cover popped loose actually quite easily. Oil running down the back there that I didn't see. I'm gonna catch that. With the uh, rocker cover off, I have not put the uh, blower housing back on yet, so I can actually bar the engine over right here. Now, the book says that to line up the timing mark on the crankshaft, the harmonic, oh, that's actually hard, not a harmonic panel to put on this, it's just a crankshaft pulley. But with the blower housing and, and the shrouds and everything on there, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's a pain to see and you're up and down. So I'm gonna show the method that I use on three cylinders. Now on four cylinders, six cylinders, you can use the uh, um, overlap method, which basically just uses the um, companion cylinder. So like on a six cylinder, you've got one and six that are coming up at the same time. If cylinder six has, uh, I think it's an intake that's open, then one is gonna be on, uh, or excuse me, exhaust then cylinder one is going to have going to be on compression because it's coming up. So both of them should have clearance. So that's one way to tell. On a three cylinder where they're firing 180, 120 degrees apart, you don't have that companion cylinder. So you can line it up with the, uh, the timing marks. And then in the book, the service factory service manual, it shows, okay, put it on number one, top dead center and adjust one intake, one exhaust. And then I think it's like two intake, three exhaust, or no, yeah. And then roll it to 100, 360 degrees to so one revolution, and then you can adjust the remainder of them. Rather than dick around with all that kind of, or mess around with all that kind of stuff, I'm just gonna show you how I do it on these three cylinders. So, if you roll it over, you'll notice I've got a, this one's gonna be an intake, and this one's gonna be an exhaust on cylinders two or one and two. So if one and two are moving, then three should be on the base circle. So if these two cylinders are open, come back, roll it over again, make sure you can see good here. You want to be careful your hands don't slip when you're rolling over this way because that edge can be sharp. Okay, so now in this one, if you notice, you've got cylinders one and three, one in, or one intake and three exhausts. So that should mean cylinder two. Yep, has clearance because it's on its base circle of the cam. So I've got a nine mil or excuse me, a nine 
thousandths and an eight thousandths feeler gauge here. So just to double check, eight feeler gauge goes under with just a slight bit of drag and just about the same amount of drag there. So that one does not need any attention. A nine, just get the tip of it under a little bit. And if I, yeah, if I really forced this one, it might go under, but that, I just kind of use that as a go, no go. Now in some of them, I actually have feeder gauges that are flat and I could have used it on this because it comes in from the side. The, the feeder gauges are flat and it has a ground surface, a ground surface out here and then a um, ground surface and then a knot. So it's usually, I use that as a go, no go. I just grabbed these ones because they were quick and handy and I wasn't sure how much access I was going to have here. So that cylinder's done. At that point, I like to take a paint marker. And just mark those two as done. They actually didn't need anything. You can kind of see where I've marked it the last time I did the valves on this. I've done the, this is the third time I've done the valves on this. Um, I will also make sure, and this, for some reason, there's no torque spec on the jam nuts in the service manual, but I'll go through and just make sure they're tight. Then roll, continue rolling over. So one intake is closed, is closing. And you've got three intake and four or and two exhausts that are open. So that should mean one is on the base circle. So let's eight thousandths and eight thousandths. Nine won't go, nine won't go. Okay, we're good there. So this, so far there's two of the cylinders that have not needed any adjustment this, uh, this go round. Last time I used a white marker on it, this time I'll use a yellow one just so I don't, just so I can keep them straight. Okay, so now we've got two intake and one exhaust open right there. So that means three is going to be on the base circle. Oh, there we go. So that one fit under nice. I had to come in from just a little bit from the side angle here. And that one's good. So we're good there. Okay, so this go round in about a thousand hours did not, last time I adjusted this was at 2,000 hours, and they did require, each one was a thou or so tight. So we're good. Now um, I'm just going to double check the uh, jam nuts on those. Okay, we're good to go. I'm gonna clean this up, clean the rocker cover off and come back in and install the rocker cover and put this part back together and then button things up. Okay, I'm gonna go wash this cover, give it a dunk in the solvent tank. But before I do, I thought I'd show the inside of that. Look at how clean that is. And you can see here in the top of the head how clean everything is. Um, that's a good, good sign that uh, the health of the inside of this engine. If you saw sludge and stuff build up in there, then uh, that would be an indicator that it was neglected. And this thing got serviced every 100 hours. Back when we were racing and using it a lot, it got serviced every 100 hours, which sometimes that was a couple times a year. Um, now that we only, like I said, I think in about nine years, we put 100, a little over 100, 100, 500, six hours on it since the last time I serviced it. Um, I think I've changed the oil three or four times. I do it when I change the chassis, the chassis engine uh, oil, but so every couple That's of years. That's a testament right there on servicing your engines properly because uh, 
That's just got a lot of life in it left, if that's any indication. And then there's the part number for the new rocker cover gasket. It's a 0187-1240, and that's if you have the three-cylinder Isuzu uh, engine in your own. Okay, so the cover's all cleaned up. New gas, the old gasket comes right out. There's a groove that goes around here, and if you look closely, you can see some tabs where the new gasket has to kind of lock into. Make sure those gas or that gasket locks into those. Don't. Um, I've seen people kind of put these on there and push their thumb one side to the other. Try not to do that because you'll actually push the gasket and stretch it from where you're pushing it from. So. I like to just kind of push it right straight down into the groove. So once that's done, I'm ready to go on. Grab a little bit of uh, brake wash of your choice. And just run around the surface. There's no sealant on this gasket, so I'll just run around, run around the mating surface with a little bit of brake wash on a towel. all cleaned. Let's go ahead and set the rocker cover back in place. Now the factory service manual shows the torque specs on this at uh, 1.6 I believe it is to 3.4 to 3.6. So transfer it over Ends up being to about 43, maximum of around 43 inch pounds. All right, I've got my torque wrench. I'm going to start from the middle here. I've got it set at only about 25 inch pounds to start with. Right there. Okay, now we'll go to the 40. All right, so that's done. Uh, I think before I put covers on, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna put this, that plastic blower housing on. At that point, I can fire it, but I'm going to undo the uh, spark arrestor first because it's right down here easy to get to so i put a 50 thousandths spacer on each one of these to allow it to space out enough to not rub so i think i've Flats all lined up properly. There we go. Okay.
you want to be careful with these shrouds um, putting them back on that you don't zip them down too tight because they are plastic and they are old this is 22 years old now generator is a 2002 model year so I'm being very gently just to start them on and then run them on by hand And I've got distance there, so it's not rubbing. Now, just before I come under here, I went ahead and set the cover up on top to make it a little easier for installation. It looks like that was a decent idea. in while I'm right here. So all the covers are back on, all the fasteners are put back in place, and then we'll go ahead and just kill the breaker here and fire it up. Spark arrestor has been cleaned and it's just ready to go. I appreciate everybody watching. I hope this was informative and helpful. So thanks for watching.